Today we're going to be talking about the Screech Halt, or also known as Feedback Buster. Something I've been using for years to stop feedback in a live situation. How are you doing guys? Today is going to be one of my favourite kind of talks. It's going to be a guitar talk. Something just popped up there under the Dario's uh, Instagram feed, which um, is... I realized that I'd actually been asked about this quite a few times and people were um, more curious about it than I realized. It's one of those things that kind of assume that people know what they are. So this little rubber thing, uh, it is not a uh, rubber ashtray, even though it, somebody might think so. This one is modified a tiny bit to fit my uh, Journey Instruments uh, guitar. Um, this is something I've been using for over 15 years. These little rubber things, you put them to cover the sound hole. And let's make one thing very, very clear. People get very excited when they see me using these uh, and they wonder how would it sound if they're gonna go buy one of these and, uh, and they can change the sound of their guitar in the bedroom. You do not use this when you play acoustically. You only use them when you amplify the sound of your uh, acoustic guitar. The purpose of this is that very often let me show you, let me try to explain it a little bit better. The top of acoustic guitar, it resonates. It resonates like crazy and it vibrates and that's where you get the projection of the sound. It, it's how the, the guitar, that's the, this is the lively part of this piece of wood and the bracing inside it probably has the biggest impact on the sound of your acoustic guitar. Uh, people get very, um, Precious about the back and the sides of your guitar It has nowhere near as much effect and the, the, this top part here is Is where it's at. I've seen guitars with laminated side and bags that sound Amazing Amazing. I've seen guitars with the solid back and sides that sound meh, Because this is where it is now when you amplify the acoustic guitar because it's such a lively part of the guitar, because it resonates so much, it picks up uh, the sound vibrating in the room coming back from your sound system into the top, right? And what you want to do is you want to stop that happening as much as possible. And I've got here one actually installed in my Trust Joel Musima, which we will talk about a little bit more. This one I use, um, this is a, a, a Takamine Triax pickup, which is... Uh, I don't, I hate to give credit to Takamai for this because it was actually designed by LR Bags and the LR Bags, I think it's LR Bags M1 is basically the same pickup. The only reason I use the Takamai one is because in Ireland for some reason there are certain products that are ridiculously overpriced compared to the price in America. Um, LR Bags is one of them. I honestly think it's to do more with the distribution than it is to do with actual LR Bags themselves because um, I can't see LR Bags wanting to uh, charge such a huge difference in price uh, because it would be bad for their business in Europe. I, I've bought the Takamai version of it because it was substantially cheaper. I've even gone as far as on a, that I've cut uh, one of these uh, feedback busters or uh, screeching halt as <laughs> the Dario calls them. You can get these made by other companies as well. I particularly like these Jadario ones, uh, Planet Wave ones, and I'll talk to you more about that in a second as well. Um, I've actually gone and cut it into two pieces, so I, I've actually put a little bit of the top of here, and then I have the uh, the bottom part here. Um, when I play acoustically, I take the bottom part out. Um, it's a bit of a fiddly thing, um, it's easy enough to get out, um, and then I'll put it back. So I, I'll give you a quick example. Somebody asked for a video of somebody playing um, what it sounds with them and without them. Uh, as I said, I would never ever ever use them for acoustic situation. I only use them for live situation. And as I said, what it does is when you cover that hole, um, it it does two things. It, it stops the, the airflow uh, of the vibration in the room going inside the hole and then uh, amplifying there again and the pickup picking it up and, and recreating the frequencies if the same frequency is vibrating both within the guitar and from the outside as well, it, it, it creates feedback, which can be, you know, screeching, it can be boominess, it can be all sorts of different 
problems if you, and it causes huge amount of problems uh, in a live situation for sound engineers. I eliminate 99% of them by using these things and I can honestly say that uh, sound engineers love my guitar sound because it's very very solid sound uh, it's very balanced sound and I hardly ever ever have feedback and if I have a feedback in a live situation I can point them out to straight away where the feedback is what frequency to cut and it's very very minimal because what I what I've been taught by a very very good friend of mine um, an excellent sound engineer who, who's not unfortunately anymore doing that work as a sound engineer but who has one of the biggest resumes in the business um, uh, Mr. Paul Thomas um, who taught me so much over the years about sound he made the point and said that every time you EQ uh, equalize your sound you are distorting the original waveform so my aim when I give a sound engineer a signal for my guitar is as simple as I'm gonna try to give them a signal where they have to do minimal amount of EQing like the less the better if if the sound engineer in my books if the sound engineer can take my guitar sound and leave it flat I have done my job perfectly yeah so I'll give you a good quick good example here's the guitar guitar it just it's still going it just goes on and on and on but because it resonates so well it can sometimes cause problems so let's put this baby they were originally called feedback busters and I like that name more now they're called the screeching halt to Dario go back to feedback buster I like it more It's still there, but it's like it's taking a lot of the boom at the bottom end out. It's it's restricting the sound. It's it has almost feel to more of an electric guitar, and you might say why do you want to do that. It's that because when I'm in an amplified situation, that's how these babies work. It, it, it's no rocket science. You you say that it's important to have the acoustic uh, elements of it. That's wonderful. I'm still I and I done research and I tested out uh, so many different pickups when they came out but I still haven't found one that can reproduce you just the the acoustic tone of the guitar which basically would be like a microphone because the best tone I can get out of guitar is by putting a microphone right here uh, right in front right in front of it uh, and amplified the thing is I play in a noisy pubs most of the time. I play in a venues which are more like rock venues uh, where things get noisy, the stage sound is loud. It's great to be saying that I want the uh, ideal acoustic guitar sound with a microphone here when you're playing, you know, sit down venue and it's completely silent. Go for it, do it. I still, I'm so used to by the dynamics of a pickup anyway, so I would still mix two of them, yeah, but that's personal preference. I, I still haven't found a pickup that I can use that in, in the live situation, in the pubs, in the bars, in the clubs, in, even at the big festival stages, you know. I need to have a really reliable tone. Uh, I need to have a tone that cuts through the drums, uh, whatever melody instrument is there. If there's a bass, it needs to cut through all of that. And I haven't come across one that can do that yet. And as long as that is the case, I have to treat these instruments as electric instruments when it is amplified. It's no rocket science, it's just the way it goes, okay? So that gives you some sort of idea. I'm gonna give you a sample on the other guitar as well, just to give you an idea of a smaller body guitar as well. These things are lifesavers. Like, 
I have an old Boss TU2 tuner that I use, pedal tuner that I use at live gigs. Uh, the TU3 is great as well. It's like one of those things that I have to have when I do a gig. I, I'm addicted to it. It's as simple as that. When I tune, um, I don't want to bother the audience about with the tuning noises. I think that's ridiculous to have to listen to somebody tune on the stage. You got a tuner, you knock it, it's dead, the signal doesn't come through. It, it's it's one of those that I think everybody must have. In if, if you have any respect to your audience, get yourself a pedal tuner that can knock the signal out of the main signal. These ones are probably the second one. These ones are the ones that has the biggest impact on my life sound, I think, of all the gadgets and tools and whatever you can get. I tried all sorts of EQ pedals, always ended up throwing them away in the end because as I said, I go back to the natural sound. If, if the pickup sound isn't right, my first thing is to either change the pickup or if it's the, the, the match with the guitar and the pickup, you know, maybe that guitar isn't the right guitar for the live situation. I'm lucky enough that I found this one, Musima, which is just a purely amazing guitar for both. And this is what it would look like in most guitars when, uh, which don't have a uh, sound hole uh, pickups. There you go, it sounds again, it sounds very very quiet, it sounds dead. Um, this one has, um, I installed the LRBAX Element Under Saddle pickup on this one. Um, it did have, these Journey instruments do come with their own pickup, built-in pickups systems, which are very similar to the K&K &K, uh, contact pickups that are under the, under the saddle. They work brilliantly for finger picking. They are not, in my books, very very good for heavy strumming, which is, my because I play so much traditional Irish music or folk music, I end up doing a lot of heavy strumming. So I need a pickup that can really, really deal with it. You know, um, this one it's from for the under saddle pickups so far. It's the best I've found. It still has that little bit of my the piezo quack, which it's nowhere near as bad on this one as it is in some other uh, major brands uh, pickups, but. It's still, I still find this as a little bit of a compromise, um, but having said that, this Journey Instruments gets more played at home than anywhere else. I, it occasionally gets to do gigs abroad, but it's not a, um, it's, it's in no way my major gigging guitar or anything like that. It's a beautiful instrument, um, Journey Instruments really have done something amazing, and I, I think revol revolutionised for us travelling guitar players, uh, things a little bit, especially in the, in the days of uh, budget airlines. So yeah, that's... That's the feedback busters, the screeching halt, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully that kind of explains you a little bit what it sounds like, what it does. As I said, I wouldn't be using it uh, in acoustic situation at all. In fact, when I play a session in the porthouse, that thing comes off straight away. If I play at home, you know, writing songs or anything like that, things comes off straight away. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. And um, I'm going to make another another video this week, um, very briefly for you guys about... Uh, my museum. I, I talked about this museum before, but um, as I told you, it's going to be retiring soon. So I think it, it, it deserves another vlog on its own. So um, hopefully that guy help, helped you guys a little bit. Hopefully it, it brought some clarity into what the feedback posters are. And uh, if you like the video, uh, please subscribe um, turn on notifications. And uh, let me know in the comments if you've used them, what you think of them, and if, if this was helpful and if there's anything else, any questions you have, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them uh, to the best of my abilities. Um, and yes, guys, thanks for watching.